During the C-SPAN school bus stop at the Fenimore House Museum in Cooperstown, New York, we saw the collection of life masks created by John Brower. John Brower was uh, a unique sort of artist in the, uh, the pantheon of American art. He was an artist that uh, created a method for taking a likeness in the early 19th century that really provided viewers with a unique visual experience. Uh, that is, an opportunity to see uh, as closely as possible the actual living face of a particular sitter, in this case, some very famous sitters. Uh, it was much more common in Brouwer's time to paint a likeness or to sculpt it from life, but not actually to take a life mask from a face directly. And when you have an artist who's painting, drawing, or sculpting a likeness, you see the sitter through the lens of the artist's perspective, the artist uh, and his style or her style, and what you often see is an idealized or a somehow altered view of that sitter uh, rather than the, the actual uh, face of that sitter. And Brouwer was a, an artist who really uh, developed a technique for cutting through that lens and offering for posterity uh, images of people as they actually looked. The technique of making life masks uh, that is applying plaster to a human face to create a mold is ancient and uh, it was very popular in Europe in the Middle Ages, particularly in the 17th century. One of the problems with this process was that the plaster used was heavy. Plaster of Paris was very heavy and it distorted the features of the sitter when it was applied to their face. Brouwer developed a plaster that was lightweight and that dried and hardened very quickly. And so it created a much more accurate likeness without distortion and without discomfort because it could be done much more quickly than the traditional method of uh, creating a life mask. Brouwer did images of all of the famous heroes of the revolution and the War of 1812, some of the most famous people at that time, living at that time between 1817 and 1833. And it included presidents and ex-presidents, heroes of the revolution, uh, men like Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, um, Dolly Madison, uh, sat for Brouwer. There were a number of sitters that knew Alexis de Tocqueville, the Marquis de Lafayette, sat for uh, uh, Brouwer, and uh, the Lafayette's portrait Lafayette's portrait was so accurate uh, that it really, it was Lafayette's portrait that catapulted Brouwer into, into international fame because other artists who had painted Lafayette's portrait uh, said that Brouwer's life mask was, was much more realistic than their portraits. There was Charles Carroll, Carroll of Carrollton. Charles Carroll knew Alexis de Tocqueville. John Quincy Adams, very interesting likeness of John Quincy Adams, who was known as a very dour uh, and serious individual, and in Brouwer's life mask, he's actually smiling, one of the rare images of him smiling. And uh, that, I think, is sort of a unique um, image to offer to posterity in American art. It was a bold experiment in Jefferson's words. Those, Jefferson called it a very bold experiment. And it uh, was not always, did not always go smoothly. And Jefferson himself had a very unpleasant experience. He didn't refuse to sit for Brouwer, but the plaster on Jefferson's uh, face dried uh, more than Brouwer intended it to dry. And it was very difficult to take off. And he had to, fr as he put it, freely use the chisel and mallet. It frightened Jefferson. It frightened his family. And Jefferson swore never to sit for another portrait again in plaster or in any other manner. But for most, uh, I think for most of the subjects, the process went very smoothly. There are a lot of testimonials that it was not disagreeable at all. And the entire process lasted about two hours and uh, was very pleasant for most of the subjects. Andrew Jackson refused to have a life mask made of him because he heard of Thomas Jefferson's experience with Brouwer, where, as Jackson put it, uh, that great man had his ears pulled off in the making of one of these life masks, and he was not about to let that happen to him.